is One Santa Fe. It's a mixed use project of retail and residential. The project to me, when I first started coming here, I could not imagine how long the project was, how big the project was, how narrow. How could we get such a big building in such a narrow space? Every day I, I arrive to work um, on the 4th Street Bridge and as you drive over heading into downtown, the, the project kind of stands out and uh, every day it stands out more and more. Very exciting job. It's a very large, biggest project I've ever been on. Just driving down the street when you come and see this thing, you know, standing way up in the air, just seeing it coming out of the ground. It used to be just, uh, all it was is an asphalt parking lot. The building is 1,650 feet long from one end to the other. Um, building A itself is 850 feet and building BC is 800 feet long. It's not a square building. The stage of the project we're at right now is wood frame construction of the residential units. We're about 40% complete on the building BC side of the project. We're still working on the precast portion on building A. We have one more level to go and then we will start the residential portion wood frame construction there as well. From the very beginning, we started the excavation on the south end of the project and moved to the north end, given how tight the uh, north end was to the existing MTA structure. Uh, there required a lot more shoring and, uh, and excavation work there, uh, as opposed to on the south end where it was all pretty much open cut, uh, sloped excavation. The first slab on grade pour uh, at the south end of the project was the first milestone because it, it kicked off the construction of the podium deck where we could set our formwork, elevated slabs from there, where we could get to a point where we could get to the residential portion of the project and start wood frame construction. In the parking structure, the uh, parking uh, called for a swirl finish. That's, a, a, I guess you would call it a rotary finish. It helps keep sand down from cars turning and stuff. Um, it will die down as more cars park in the basement, but uh, the rotary finish tends to make noise level uh, quieter when cars are driving down in the basement. So it starts with a series of guys, usually in a row, and, and a finisher can handle probably about a 10 foot wide section and they'll have two floats in their hands and they'll continue to do a rotary finish and work their way backwards. One of the big milestones on this project was the uh, steel bridge that's above us. Erecting this thing was uh, very challenging. So we were supposed to go up with one big piece, one floor line. Those pieces were too big and they started rotating. So we had to break it apart and put it in two and three piece sections, going from one column to the next column and bracing it up underneath. Due to the weight factor, the beams were rotating in the air once they were getting tied off. So we had multiple bracing points, guide wires off, uh, and multiple directions. One of the interesting things about this building is the precast structure. I never worked with it before. Um, everything's cast in a plant, and then they truck them all out here and stand them up in pieces. It goes really fast. Uh, in about four days, they, we set tees about 700 lineal foot, so setting about 50 pieces a day uh, goes up really quick. But it is kind of challenging. We have to we have a lot of embeds that all have to be perfectly placed, and everything has to be 100% correct and done before it gets before the pieces actually come here. They're just going to place them in place. Most of the pieces are very heavy. They're anywhere between 29,000 and uh, 49,000 pounds. Uh, the first, fourth floor being the heaviest, that it carries three stories of wood framing above. Uh, these are heaviest pieces. They weigh a little north of uh, 49,000 pounds. So they have a big 265-ton hydraulic crane, and it's got uh, about 160,000 pounds of counterweight behind it. So they got to be able to. It's got to lift a lot. So. <laughs> When we initially started negotiating with a framing subcontractor, 
the use of panelization was discussed. We first thought it wasn't going to be possible because of how many different unit types there are, but um, they've been very successful with you know, doing panelization for all the walls uh, on the project, which has uh, sped up the process of framing. In addition to that, we're also using a, a smart wall system, which uh, takes place of a double-sided shear walls. On the One Santa Fe project, Bernard's has really enjoyed using this product because it is a higher quality product. So the smart components um, are a laterally braced wall that's dropped into the building to resist lateral loads, uh, namely seismic and wind, and it replaces a conventionally framed shear wall. A conventionally framed shear wall would be built out of uh, dimensional lumber and plywood. Smart walls have no plywood. Uh, prefabricated off-site, dropped into place into the sill track, and uh, helps with quality and time and uh, dollars. We're moving along at, on this project at a very quick pace at, right at this point in time. We're maintaining schedule on A building, but we are gaining on the schedule in B and C with the framing. We were framing approximately a floor every three weeks. And uh, right now, it's uh, BC is ahead of schedule, and A is just keeping right up with it right now. Usually, when you come into a mixed use, when you come into a mixed use property, the units on the apartment units are stacked. In other words, they're the same as they go up the floors. So the same footprint as you go up. So the plumbing all lines up, the, the, all the electrical lines up, the water lines up. On this building, nothing stacks from floor to floor. We have been, you know, so you don't have plumbing sitting over the top of another plumbing wall. So every apartment is offset from the next apartment up above. Vice versa, it keeps changing. So there's a lot of planning on routing of the utilities going through. We're still dealing with that aspect throughout the job in multiple areas where several RFIs are being applied and written um, by a building by building, floor by floor, unit by unit. The building was designed by Michael Maltzen, who is a world-renowned architect, is uh, very famous, very well known in the community, especially in the arts district. And this building is going to blend in, but be the new style of art that's coming into this area. The concept for this project, the design concept, was to mimic the train yard where it, it, you look at it um, from an aerial view, it looks like uh, trains segmented together and, and like a spur coming off it. And since it's right next to the train yard, it makes sense to do that. When you first step out on the job site, uh, you get this sense that we're not just building a building here, we're building a city. Uh, there's depth to the site where you're not just faced up against a, a building, but you're, you're standing in the middle of a courtyard with several different buildings that go up six stories and all connected, but they, they seem like single structures. Every day you come to work here and the project changes from day to day, from week to week. I get the biggest compliments from people going, I don't understand, just a week ago you were only up to here and now look where you are. Things change daily. When you come to work every day, it's something new.